Hey everybody, what's up? It's Colleen here and um, I want to share a really cool lesson and a story uh, about how clearing old relationships can help you live out your purpose. So they seem to be not related, but in my experience, they totally, totally are. And so let's go ahead and dive in. So I'm so excited to be with you here uh, in my new house in Richmond. So it's so cool. Yay. Um, you know, recently I moved and it was like this big miracle and here we are. So, so excited to be with you in this little miracle house. Um, so, you know, what made me think about doing this video was, you know, how much there's the desire within to really live out our truest potential. And it's almost like this ever growing creative force that after a while takes more energy to hold in and hold back when it's ready to be expressed than it is to just stay the same. You know, let me know if you're watching the replay here or if you're live, give me a one in the comments if you ever feel like that, like that beautiful quote of the energy, the effort it took for the rose to uh, stay like a bud was more than it was to bloom. And I feel like so many of us, so many women are more in that capacity, more in that space. There we go. Where, you know, maybe you're feeling more in tune with your own sense of energy than ever before. Maybe you're feeling more inclined to learn about your intuition or even sensing what that might be like for you in the past where it didn't happen that way. Let me know if that's you. Um, because, you know, and, and all of that might seem like it's one area of our life, right? Like tuning into our own spiritual self, tuning into our own intuition, knowing with clarity what to do next, what's right for us, our own inner growth and that energy booming and bursting forth. And yet sometimes it feels like something and sometimes things pull us out of that vortex, out of that place. And a lot of the times, you know, even though I focus most of my life on purpose and where I want to go and what I want to create and like what God wants for me, what I've noticed is that more and more often than not, as soon as I was ready to do that, it was like a relationship got my attention that I had to address. And at the time it felt really annoying or uh, unrelated, but now looking back and also helping so many women through this, I mean, not too many, but like enough to see a pattern in the coaching work that I do as a purpose alignment coach. Like, it's like almost every single person I work with, by the time they actually come to me to let that potential out, some relationship is falling apart. Okay, so in your life, let me know with a two in the comments if that's ever happened to you or maybe it's happening now where, again, it's like you're ready to burst through with your own authentic self, really live that out, and yet one either romantic or maybe a family relationship is like really catching your attention and drawing you back in. Okay, so I don't have my glasses on right now, so I'm just going to look. Uh, said Hannah uh, said yes. So hello, said Hannah. Um, and so all of that being said, I just want you to know that this is all happening for your greatest good. Okay. The universe heard the call. The universe heard the call of your soul saying, I'm ready. What's next? Like I am ready to burst forth. I'm ready to be my truest self. I'm ready to be my free, authentic self. What's next? And sometimes Things need to get awkward and messy before they get elegant. You know what I mean? It's kind of like your own soul, your higher self is like, what? She's listening now. Everybody, everybody, let's do it. And in order to get to that clarity and that authenticity, it's like you got to pull the gunk out first. And so that is what tends to come out first. And sometimes it's really confusing when we're trying to manifest or we're trying to be that confident person we know deep down we are when all of a sudden kind of like shit hits the fan and you're like, maybe like, I don't know, <laughs> like have an injury or all of a sudden you have like a really bad fight with your partner, stuff like that. Like that's typically the gunk that needs to come out. So what do you do with that? Well, what I want to share is my own personal story of what, um, at least in this occasion, needed to happen for me to be able to hear my own intuition well and to actually go and flourish rather than be held back. 
So um, it was in college, when I was in college, a sophomore in college, I had gotten back together with a really brilliant person who I really loved deeply, but the first time we were together, it just, the timing didn't work out, and after a while, we slid into this, like, judgmental place. And he came back into my life, um, where at first we were just friends, but with this person, like, we started to talk more, and I just loved our conversations. I just loved the dynamic we had together, and at first it was really great. So I was like, yes, this is amazing, and I can be my most confident self, and I feel good. And as time progressed, all of a sudden, this, like, little voice in the back of my head started creeping in, and it was, like, this judgmental voice. It was this judgmental voice saying, like, oh, you shouldn't wear that. That looks ugly. And I was like, where did that come from? You know, kind of like, ugh. But I would kind of ignore it and then just keep going. And then I'd hang out with this person again. And the way that he spoke kind of sounded like that voice in my head, kind of this like judgmental type of a bite. And I was like, ugh, like, I don't like that. But I was like, whatever. And so I, you know, kept focusing on my studies, kept, which was my purpose at the time. And I, I loved it. That was my own expression, right? So I kept focusing on that. I kept, you know, just trying to be my authentic, brightest self in this relationship. But the more that, that we, you know, every morning it was like I'd get dressed and that same judgmental voice would come in the back of my mind. Just like, oh, this biting sound. And um, for me, like, it, it's so insidious when we have those judgmental voices, right? And uh, this person uh, left again, but we stayed in touch through phone and we were kind of dating, but kind of not. And even when he wasn't around, it was like more and more of this judgmental feeling. The more and more I talked to him, kept being around my sphere. It was like, I remember being in the union uh, cafeteria, standing in line for a Subway sandwich. And I was just feeling kind of more dark and like contracted when all of a sudden I had this fear as I'm waiting for my sandwich as if this person is waiting right behind me. And I kind of like tensed and looked back and nobody was around me. But it was the most bizarre feeling of thinking, why would I, why would my body, why would I just like tense up like that in fear thinking he was around? And so that was a big trigger for me of like, even though this relationship on the surface seems great, there's nothing wrong, you know, we're not even officially boyfriend, girlfriend, we're just having a good time. I was like, something's wrong here. Some, and, and it's so hard when there's nothing specifically wrong. You know, sometimes it's easier when it's black and white and being like, okay, you beat me, gotta go. You know, and obviously I say that with so much respect, but uh, when there's nothing literally wrong, it's hard to pinpoint and say, that's why I have to leave. And that was my experience. Maybe you've had a similar one, too. Let me know with a little three in the comments. If you've been in a relationship where you felt there was something wrong and you can't put your finger on it, but it, you know kind of deep down you need to leave it, but it's hard because there's nothing wrong. Sometimes that can happen in family dynamics, too, where you know you just have to set a boundary. But it can be so hard when you're like, I don't even know why. But I want you to know, friend, that like if that's coming up, most of the time, 9 out of 10, that is your intuition speaking. It's that silent, that easy thing that is your knowingness beyond thought. That's your intuition. Okay? So for me, I remember I tried to ignore it. I tried to ignore it thinking, um, you know, this is just me. You know, all these excuses. Like, this is just me. There's nothing wrong here. He's not even here. I'm freaking out. But the energetic sense of it all just kept feeling more contracted, contracted. And I would be in class and I couldn't think. You know, like I could only feel that, that tenseness in my body. And so it got to the point where I started to like pray because I was just like, I don't know what to do here. And all I kept getting back was like, you got to cut the cord. You got to, you got to break up. You got to just release this now. And it was so, <laughs> it was so hard to allow that in. But the more and more I put it off, the more and more it felt more heavy. It felt true. And so I remember the night I, I had decided to do this. I had decided to listen to the call. I had no idea what would happen after. I had no idea how this would affect my overall well-being or the rest of my work and career in school. But I just knew that something had to change. And if I was going to be 
real and true to spirit, to myself, I had to take this drastic action. And so it was a night in November where I go out from this red brick dormitory room I had been in, uh, this old building from the 1900s, and I go out into the front uh, patio where there's beautiful stairs and beautiful um, lights like in the 1940s lighting up the sky. And what I had remembered was this quote I saw from a card recently I had received where it was purple and the card was square and it said, the darkest day for the caterpillar was the day before it came, became a butterfly. And as I remembered that to help me have strength to do this, I was outside and all of a sudden I see all of these little fluttering pieces of pollen coming from the trees and they were these little fuzzy cylinders that almost looked like caterpillars. So I thought, you know what? thank you, God, like, okay, I can do this. So I called this person up. I told him, like, hey, I really love being your friend, and I really love being connected, but for some reason, I think I just have to go. And as I was saying it, and right before, my hands were sweaty. I was shaking. My heart was palpitating. I felt like I couldn't breathe, but somehow I got it out, and I just said, you know what? I don't know why, but I, I can't keep talking to you. And I was hoping he'd be really – you know, understanding, and he'd be like, it's fine. But he was not, and he was very abrupt, and he just was harsh and hung up on me. <laughs> and it was so, it, it hurt me so bad because a big wound of mine was this feeling of abandonment, and that was like the ultimate feeling of abandonment. And I would love to say, like, you know, that day I just felt like leaping and jumping and abounding and thinking, yes, it's done. But in reality, that lowness, that going through the fear, like, what did I just do? And can I really trust this? Can I have faith in this? Is this my intuition at all? Like, all of that actually did last a little bit. And I'm telling you that in case you know in your heart you're ready for a change. If you know in your heart you're ready to expand, to allow your greatest authentic self to come forth, but that maybe there's some things in the way that energetically have you feel tight. It's not always easily new and expansive. Sometimes there's a healing process that, process that needs to take place. And so you know, if, if that's you, I want you to tell me and just write in the comments, yes, I've been there and I'm here for your support. Like, I just want to say that I'm here for your support. If you need help to get through a relationship like this, if you need help to allow your authentic new life to come forth, but you're not sure how or how to heal, I can help you with that. And just reach out with a private message or let me know in a comment below and I'll, and I'll reach out to you. Um, so yeah, it, it was a process of healing. But what I can tell you is that one, it's the thinking a lot of the times that can make it even worse. So when at that time I didn't have a lot of faith and I didn't know how to use my intuition right, so I was doubting myself. I was doubting, doubting. And through that healing, that was part of the healing, was learning how to have faith again. And I'll never forget, as time went on, winter turned into spring, I felt more focused on my work. I felt more focused on Colleen and what she needs and, um, you know, what did I really want? Maybe taking care of myself rather than going to class when I never had would have done that before. And I remember just to finish this story, there was a day when I would start to get, you know, caught up in my thoughts of like, oh, did I really do this right? And I can't believe I did that. And I would go into that judgmental self to me. And all of a sudden, I would see this blooming tree right in front of me that would just totally catch my attention. I'd be like, wow. And I would just, and then I would go back into this thinking of, you know, ah, oh, you're so stupid and like all this judgmental talk and did I really make the right choice and how can I really trust myself? Boom, another huge tree or a flower just coming right in front of my face to distract me from that mental chatter. Wow. So, after that kept happening, I took it as a sign to say, you know what, Colleen, it's okay to relax. It's okay to let yourself heal. It's okay to go with this flow and trust it, even if you don't know where you're going. And what I can tell you, after that, it did not take too much longer when I did finally become more of my confident self. It's always in process. We're always in process. But once that relationship went aside and it really was cutting the cord, I found new relationships. I found my, my stammer back and I put my faith back into spirit, into God and into myself rather than another person. Because the truth is relationships can't even work when it's too 
you know, half full individuals coming to try to complete, they're always going to, you know, uh, like it's not going to work. It's not going to work. So it's when two whole complete people who are full in themselves with their connection to spirit come together. That's when a relationship can work. And that's when you can be in a relationship and also be your most authentic self. And so I share all of that in case you're in a relationship right now that you know you have to get out of, or you're wanting to become your best self and live out your purpose, whether it's in your career, even if it's knowing what you want, having that clarity, having the ability to make your own decisions and like really blossom to make the biggest difference you can in the world, to just be yourself, to be your strong, authentic, brilliant self. If you're ready for that, check in. What relationships might have to change? What is making you feel tense like I had as myself in that relationship? And just take an inventory to see what needs to happen next and tune in with your spirit to say, what's the next step? So that you really can get all the gunk that might be like that cage keeping you stuck or all that gunk that needs to come out first so that you can and will come to your clearest point of expression, of truth, of understanding, of compassion coming from here and out to the world. So I hope you've enjoyed this and let me know in the comments if this relates. If you're in any relationships, definitely let me know. And again, if you're ready to be your brightest self, heal in what needs to heal so that you can be strong for those you care about and really just live your best life, learn about intuition and how to make good clarity decisions for yourself, definitely write me in the comments and I can reach out to you because that's all possible for you. It's just waiting for you to take the next step. I'm sending you so much love today. I hope you have a wonderful day and namaste.